Hello everyone, my name is Malki Asad and I'm hosting this lecture series to aid medical students and residents in conduction of research studies, research design, statistical analysis and writing. In the next few episodes, we'll be talking about case reports. We will be covering different aspects such as the definition, which cases are worth publishing, the case presentation, introduction, discussion and journal selection. And today, we will start by the definition and identifying the aspects that can differentiate between those cases that can be published versus not. So case reports are a description of unexpected disease presentation or clinical course. Generally, case reports are description of unique, unusual, unexpected disease or clinical course. and includes only a few number of patients. And this is what differentiates case reports from case series, which generally include larger number of patients. There is no consensus about the actual number that def defines case reports. Generally speaking, one patient is a case report, but two to four patients can be considered case report or case series, depending on the journal. And case series, anything larger than that. So if we define case report as one patient, case series would be two or more patients. If you define case report as one to three patients, case series would be four or more patients. Case reports and case series are differentiated from cohort studies, which includes a comparison group, or we call it a control group. And we will cover these kinds of studies in future lectures. But generally speaking, cohort studies have a control group, and I'll just give you a small example. Let's say we have one patient with heart failure that was given a medication. And we wanted to assess whether this medication or works, works, so we wrote a case report about that. One single patient. This is case report. Let's say now we have 10 patients with the same disease and they got the same medication. This would be considered case series because we have larger number of patients, which is 10, and we don't have a comparison group. We're not comparing this medication to anything else. Now let's say we have 10 patients who got this medication and 10 patients who got placebo or no medication. And now we're comparing the effect of medication A to placebo. So now we have a comparison group. This makes the study a cohort study compared to the case report or case series which don't have con control or comparison group. What is the scope of case reports? Which specialties publish case reports? And the other question is, are there any aspects of a disease or course, this disease presentation or course that can be published and others are not? Because for any disease, we have a disease presentation. What are the symptoms that the patient presented with? Diagnosis, how we diagnose the disease. Treatment, which can be medical or surgical. The complications, drug reactions. And the answer is, there is no specific scope for case reports. Any of these areas that I mentioned or specialties can be a topic of case report. Sometimes authors combine a case report with a literature review or systematic review. And the reason for that is it can help the study uh, identify prior studies and compare your outcomes to prior literature. And the other important aspect is that it helps your paper to be published. Because whenever you have more, if you have a systematic review outcomes in your study, that will help your study to be easily picked by journals. So if you combine your case report with a literature review, that can help it get published easier. I think the most important question where you, when you are writing a case report is identifying whether it's publishable or not. And although we can't predict the future, there are certain factors that can help us identify if this paper will likely be published or not. And this is a step that so many students skip and they just start with writing the case without doing the adequate amount of literature search to identify if this is a worthwhile endeavor or not. The first step, I think, is doing a literature search. Looking in the literature, of whether other people have published something about that. Although you, your mentor or you thought that this is an interesting case, there might be few cases published in other countries or in journals that you don't usually read. So 
doing a literature search through PubMed and through Google to identify all prior cases is a very critical step. It might take some time, but it can save you so much time after you finish your study and get it to the journal to discover that this case is not unique anymore. So what should you look in the literature? The first thing you would look is number of prior cases. Has anybody published about this? How many cases are there? Is this one or two thing, or there are already 50 cases about that? Any case series? Okay, any large number of patients from the same study, from the same institution, same surgeon or doctor? And this can help you identify the importance of your work because if you're writing a case report of one patient but somebody else has published 50 cases about that in one single study, your study is not likely going to be published. And the other factor is how your case is different or unique from the prior cases. Because although sometimes you might find good amount of studies published about your topic, but your case has something unique that was not present in prior studies. And it can be unique in the treatment or in diagnosis or in the presentation or the complication or drug reaction as we, all, as we mentioned before. So if you did not identify prior cases, that's an amazing thing. That means your case is unique and it's actually different from the prior literature and you can go ahead and start writing. But if there are prior cases, you have to assess whether it was a big case series, whether your case has something unique or different or not. Once I was in a grand round and I found a very interesting surgical case and I wanted to write a case report about that. And I went to the literature and searched and I found studies from other institutions with much larger numbers. So I didn't think that it would be a good investment of time to go on ahead and write that case report. So it's always better to drop the study that beforehand rather than going all the way down to submission to journal and then finding out that it's not worth it. Another critical factor is the learning point. What is the value of every publication is getting new idea, new information to help surgeons and doctors do something different. So when you're writing your case, is there any learning point from your study? Is this drug reaction that you're reporting or treatment can, can help physicians practice differently? If the answer is yes, that means you, your case is more likely to be published, is more likely to be of interest. Of course, always feedback from your mentors, from experts in the field, will help you identify whether this is worthwhile or not. And the target journal, always have a target journal in your mind. And the fees are an important factor in publishing case reports because I will see, as we'll see in our last episode, about case reports. Most case report journals are open access, which means you have to pay in order to get the publication. We'll start by discussing a few case reports that were published and assessing what made these cases unique to help you identify whether your study can be similar or different. Sometimes the answer to whether a case is unique or not is easy, like this case. This case report was published in Lancet, which is one of the highest impact factor journals in the medical literature. And it's talking about the first human face transplant, which is a very unique case and the first ever surgical case in the literature. And this included, this included the transplanting a face from a cadaver to a human after trauma. As I think everyone agrees, this is a very unique case. It has significant implications on the field of transplantation, trauma, and plastic surgery in general. So I don't think anyone disagrees that this is publishable, but the question here in such cases is where we get this paper published and this got published in Lancet. This other case is also a very interesting case, but it's of lower impact than the prior study. It's published in JAMA Dermatology, and it's assessing the treatment outcomes of uh, two drug therapies that were already used for metastatic breast cancer, but it's assessing them for a different cancer, which is apocrine adenocarcinoma. So this case is 
assessing a disease that was already known. And the treatment is also already known, but the combination of that treatment for that specific disease is unique. And the patient got good outcomes and the paper was published. Why? Because it has implications. It's assessing new treatment for the disease and that if this treatment works for this kind of patients, that means we can apply it to other patients and help them treat the disease. This case is more, is more questionable. This case is describing a caffeine overdose. The patient mistakenly took caffeine instead of protein for his pre-workout supplement and got symptoms of caffeine overdose. As you can see here, I looked in the literature and I identified several cases already published. This one is eight case series, which includes eight patients. This one is suicide by ingestion of caffeine. And when I first saw the, saw the case, I thought that maybe the workout supplement is the unique aspect that made this paper different. And I actually also found another paper published about using caffeine as a supplement and cost toxicity. So I don't know what was actually the unique aspect in this case. And I also did, did a Google search and I found so many articles published about that. So in the prior study, according to the authors and to my quick literature search, I did not find any article public discussing the use of this treatment for that cancer. So that made this treatment or suggested treatment a unique case. While in this case, as we can see, there are several articles published about that. And here, there is something very important that you have to consider is that sometimes journals might be willing to publish a case report that was already known if they think that this would be an interesting topic to the, to the readers of the journal. Because sometimes the other articles might be published in a different field. Let's say a pain article, pain case report was published in pain journals and neurologists have never read this article and somebody submitted, submitted this case to neurology journals. So the journal might be interested in publishing it because the audience is different. Sometimes the audience is the same, so it's already published in neurology journals and the journal think that this could be another interesting case or something to open the discussion again. Fees are a very important factor in the case report publishing because this, ar this article was published in BMJ case report, which is a paid journal, and some journals might be willing to publish such cases if there is fee involved. I want to tell you about one of my cases, which is the formation of cranioplasty. Briefly, cranioplasty is the reconstruction of the cranium. So if a patient had <coughs> a trauma to the skull and this caused defect in the bone, we reconstruct that using either bone, again, from, from different parts of the body, or we use titanium or peak cranioplasties. This case of a child had a trauma to his head and was reconstructed with a titanium cranioplasty. As you can see here, he was playing and he was hit by one of his friends and that caused deformation of his titanium plate. The case was unique because it's first in a child and we treated the case differently than prior literatures. So when I first looked at this case, I thought this is very interesting. I went to the literature and found two cases published already. So I then looked at what these cases in included for me to identify whether our, our case is unique or already similar to what has been published. The two cases published before were first in adult patients, which are different patient population. And second, they were not treated surgically because they were not affecting the patients. So the surgeons thought that this could be left alone without causing any problem to the patient. While in our case, because the patient was a child, he's gonna be playing with his, with his friends and having a deformation of his head like that, is probably gonna affect his psychological, gro psychological growth. So the surgeon decision was to go ahead and replace this titanium plate with another plate. And this, is, was, this was the unique aspect of our case. And the learning point <clears throat> was that Children playing and having cranioplasty, this does not offer 100% protection and they should be wearing helmets during such 
activities that put their cranioplasties at risk. So let's say you did your literature search, your case was unique, there are learning points, it could be of interest to the journal. What do you do next? You go and collect the case information. This could be actual paper charts or could be electronic medical records. And sometimes it might be hard to find this kind of information, especially in the paper form, but you have to look for whatever information you have to collect as much information as possible. So you need to collect what the disease presentation was, how the patient presented to you or to the surgeon or the hospital, what were the physical exam findings, lab test results, imaging, what was the treatment, post-op photos or any photos for assessing the patient, follow-up results, and patient satisfaction. And sometimes, although you might have a very interesting case, the lack of some of this information might, might make your paper unpublishable. Let's say you're assessing uh, facial reanimation photos, and the main outcome in, this, in these kind of surgeries is smile and assessing how much your lip is going up when you smile. But you don't have post-op photos. So there's no way we can assess the outcomes of your surgery. That makes the, the case report very hard to publish because the main outcome that you're trying to assess of whether your treatment was successful or not is not there. So many times the patient, you do an amazing surgery or you treat the patients in a very unique way, but the patient is lost to follow up. So you can't get any information from the patients and that makes your ability to publish a paper extremely hard. So try to include as many photos as possible that can be helpful to the reader. Getting patient satisfaction or patient reported outcomes can also help your, public, uh, your article. So the more, once your article is unique, the more data you have about your case, the better. I hope you enjoyed this lecture today. If you like it, please subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And thank you so much for watching.